Hello friends, welcome back. In this session, we will understand in depth about the elements of cognitive system. This is something very important and we are going to discuss in depth each of these elements in the sessions that are going to come in the near future. So we will give you a glimpse of what are the elements with brief overview and that will be really helpful for you to get in into deeper learning in the near future. We are getting into the final level for the finishing touch. In fact, towards the fundamentals, and we are going to jump in depth into the core areas. A cognitive system consists of many different elements. A lot of elements together actually makes a system cognitive. Ranging from the hardware and the deployment models to machine learning and applications, it's all combination of hardware plus software, machine learning, deep learning, NLP, many things come together to build a system and to make it cognitive. There are many approaches existing for creating a cognitive system, but there are some common points, common elements that are to be included. And we are going to discuss that and that can be kept as a blueprint for you to proceed that. The picture is presented in the right hand side. It's like layer by layer that we need to understand. We are first going to go with the last layer or you can take it first layer when you start from the bottom. I'm going to start from the infrastructure and the deployment modalities. This is the first one that we are going to discuss. The first and the foremost point in any system when you are building is to be the infrastructure. The cognitive system is expected definitely to be very flexible and agile because the applications keep really growing. Now, when you, when you talk about the term agile, we need to define that. What is agile? Agile means flexible. Agile means iterative. Agile is a time boxed iterative approach to any software delivery that builds software incrementally from the start of the project instead of trying to deliver it all at once near the end. I'm not going to give you the bunch of the software as the final product and I'm going to iteratively deliver it instead so that we can go ahead and make it real flexible. We can make changes as and required. We can meet the customer requirements much more importantly easier here well the market for the cognitive solutions are really maturing we have variety of public and private data which needs to be managed and even needs to be processed we are going to handle a lot of data and some of them could be private some of them could be public in addition to that the organizations also are trying to leverage the software as a service application model and services to meet industry specific requirements a highly parallelized and distributed environment, including the compute, the storage, the cloud services, all these must be supported in the infrastructure. What we mean to say here is, it has to be more agile, more flexible, and that needs to be really flexible in such a way that additions can be there, deletions can be there. It should be the customer expectation end of the day. So the infrastructure and the deployment models on the whole is expected to be very agile. Well, where are we getting next? We are getting into that data access, metadata, and management services. Please remember, I'm going layer by layer. The sourcing, accessing, management of data is all very critical and crucial in any system, and it is no different in cognitive system. Everything is data here. If you are not getting the data right, if you are not analyzing the data right, if the insights are not generated right, the entire system is going to be a collapse. So before adding or using the data, there must be a range of underlying services that you need to provide. To prepare the use of the ingested data definitely requires an understanding of the origins and the whereabouts of the data. We need to understand from where the data comes. Therefore, we need a way to classify the characteristics of the data such as when the text or data source was created by whom all this kind of information would be really helpful they are mandated indeed and this information will make your further process easier in the cognitive system these data sources are definitely not static we are repeating this point for at least four or fifth time fourth or fifth time in the discussion we are not talking about data sources which are static. We are talking about data sources which are dynamic and which has variety, which has veracity, which has velocity. So we definitely need to be careful. Well, 
there will be variety of internal and external data sources that are to be included in the corpus. Remember, we talk about variety here. If these data sources are to make sense, there needs to be set of management services that prepares the data to be used within the corpus. This is very, very important. Therefore, as in the traditional system, the data must be going through the stages which will enable it to be vetted, cleansed, and most importantly, monitored for accuracy. We are going to discuss a lot on this and this subject is going to pay more attention on the data and we will discuss a lot more. But before we go into the next step, we need to also understand what is corpus, the taxonomies, and the data catalogs. This term is very important. A corpus is nothing but a knowledge base of ingested data and is used to manage codified knowledge. Let me make it simple. Corpus is nothing but a large unstructured collection of text documents or spoken language recordings that are used for linguistic analysis, research and training of language models. It's collection. It's collection of data. It's collection of large volume of data and that's used to train the large models. A corpus serves as a representative sample of a language or languages that allows the researchers and AI systems to study various linguistic aspects, patterns and phenomena. So this is the collection, this is the bunch that will enable you to learn further. You can build model with this, you can learn with this, you can understand pattern with this, you can understand phenomena which is connected to the data through this. So corpus is very important. The next terminology that we need to understand is ontology. What is ontology? Ontology refers to a formal and structured representation of knowledge that defines the concepts, entities, relationships and properties within a particular domain. We discussed what is corpus sometime back. Now we are discussing ontology. Ontology is again formal. It is again structured representation, but it is the structured representation of the knowledge that defines the concepts, entities, relationships and the properties within that focus domain. Ontologies are most often developed by industry groups to classify industry specific elements. You can take examples such as chemical compounds, machine parts, medical diseases and treatments. So I hope that clarifies they are mostly developed by industry driven groups and they develop industry specific elements they develop ontologies which can classify the industry specific elements to be concise which can be used in chemical compounds machine parts or medical uh, terms or diseases and even treatments we have discussed this clearly and i hope you understood what ontology is the next one is taxonomy a taxonomy works hand in hand with ontology a taxonomy provides context within the ontology the ontology is supported the ontology is clearly supported and coordinated through this taxonomy. It is going to provide context within the ontology. Taxonomy refers to the hierarchical classification system that organizes concepts or objects into structured framework. It is more of hierarchical thought process. So how do we get into the structured framework? We get the structured framework based on their shared character characteristics and relationships. Taxonomies are used to categorize and to organize information in such a way that it helps users to better understand and navigate into the complex domains. So this goes hand in hand with the ontology and this is more about the hierarchy that we are talking about. Well, next level that we are getting into is the data analytic services. Data analytic services are the techniques which are going to be used to gain understanding of the data whatever we are going to ingest and which are going to be managed within the corpus. There are many algorithms which are going to be applied which are going to be used to develop the model for the cognitive system and this is very very important. Now continuous machine learning is next thing that we need to understand. I have been already telling you this point cognitive systems are totally expected to learn and they should learn continuously. Machine learning techniques will enable, will give the capability for the cognitive systems to learn and machine learning makes it easier and machine learning gets this task of learning easier without being explicitly programmed or without having human intervention to come in there. 
and cognitive systems are not static the models are updated based on data new entries analysis interactions and more so a machine learning process has got two very important key elements one is hypothesis generation second one is hypothesis evaluation so we need to understand machine learning is going to play a real vital role in the entire process i have been repeatedly telling this the learning cognitive system must learn to learn from the data you need tools for processing both structured and unstructured data in the previous session i gave you the differences between structured and unstructured data nlp can be used deep learning systems can be deep learning algorithms can be used unstructured data like the images video sound all these require deep learning tools data from the sensors are important too they are also to be handled properly so we need to choose appropriate tools and techniques algorithms like the nlp one like the deep learning one like the machine learning one and that will enable the learning process to go smooth without any inter interruption the learning should never stop and if it stops it's not cognitive let's get into the next one the presentation and the visualization services the cognitive system handles a lot of data it brings text or unstructured data all together and you cannot understand it if you are not getting a proper visualization presented there for you right we need to get proper visualization to gain proper insights we need to have images motion and sound are also the elements that needs to be understood and analyzed so making this data very interactive through visualization interface can help a cognitive system to be more accessible and much more usable so a system if it is cognitive and if there are no takers or no users or if it is very tough to understand that's going to be really difficult we are getting it much easier through proper presentation and visualization services cognitive applications the last layer a cognitive system must leverage all the underlying services to create applications that addresses problems very nicely and these applications are focused on solving problems and most importantly that should be very engaging to the user a very well designed cognitive system shall be very easy for the end user to use and most importantly it should be able to generate insights and better decisions can be arrived through that insights i hope it was clear and concise in case you have questions please go ahead and ask me i'll be glad to answer thank you